in a previous unit I showed you how you can get a magnet out of an old speaker and it's one of these lovely powerful ceramic magnets and I suggested that you use a hammer to break that up into little bits and pieces so that you've got these um, really nice powerful magnets so that you can get children actually getting their hands on magnets and working with them. In this unit I'm going to cover a whole lot of activities that you can use these magnets to talk about and teach the motor effect of um, electromagnetism. How can we show the children the, what leads to the left hand rule? And this is a very simple easy way um, that I can show you. It comes to you um, from a teacher, a friend of mine, Pam Robertson, who teaches at Sinanjonga High School here in Cape Town in an informal settlement. All we need is some aluminium foil. What I do is take the thin strip of aluminium foil and I support it like that and I connect one side of the aluminium foil, the other side and got a magnet, that's the North Pole, put it near the conductor, when I close the circuit, down it goes. From there I can now very easily teach them about the left hand motor rule. I've got my magnetic field, it's coming out of the North Pole, so four fingers field, it's going that way, the current is going from positive, it's going down that way, so therefore the motion is down and that's exactly what we saw. Of course um, I can now got a little piece of the ceramic magnet and I can use that. I wonder if this is the north or the south face. Of course we, this goes up and that tells me the field must be coming in. In other words that's the south pole. Right, so the children know that there's a magnetic field associated with a current flowing through a conductor uh, and the issue is with respect to magnetic fields there's two things the children have got to learn about. Um, what is the shape of that field and what is the direction of the field. And here's a very nice easy way that doesn't require huge equipment to show children what the shape and the direction around a current carrying conductor is. All I need is three torch cells, some copper wire, this stuff you can get from the auto electrician shop, uh, old generators, starter motors, get them to give you an old fuel magnet. I use a block of wood to make myself a coil. The secret here is strength of the magnetic field uh, depends on how many turns there are in the coil and the current flowing through it. I've got a sheet of cardboard, I've cut a slit in it, fit it through and then pass the current through that coil. And don't forget to scrape the uh, insulation off the end of that because remember there's varnish around that. Now the question is how do they know there's a magnetic field because you can't see anything, you can't see magnetic fields. If I'm teaching about magnetic fields, <clears throat> the way in which I'd have, a, I'd have a discussion with them is take them, these two magnets, turn one around and they can sense that there definitely is something operating between these things. There's something invisible there. How do scientists see things that are invisible? Well, doctors use x-rays to see broken bones. Scientists use iron filings to see magnetic fields. Now, in this case I'm going to connect this up. My current is running from positive around down the side, up that side, down that side, up that side. And now we sprinkle some iron filings on here. Secret is get as fine an iron filing as possible, sprinkle it from quite far up and don't sprinkle too many. We're now ready to roll. I'm going to connect that there so that the electricity can flow and give this a tap. Wow, isn't that absolutely magic? Don't let the electricity flow too much because that's copper wire, very low resistance, so you're actually draining a lot of electricity out of, through there. So don't 
have the circuit flowing too much. Then the issue of the direction of the magnetic field, we've got the shape of the field, all one needs is some plotting compasses, put them in that field, switch it on and the little needles orientate around and they can see that it's concentric around the conductor. Right, I'll show you a very easy, quick way in which students can make an electric motor to show magnetism, coil, we can get movement. All you need is a cell and some copper wire. Again, get that from your auto electrician and wind yourself a coil. Take your knife and just clear the varnish off half of the little bit that comes off the end. So the top half is clear. Then we need a bicycle tube and out of it I'll cut myself an elastic band. That elastic band goes over the battery. I then need two paper clips which I'm going to use to make into a stand for my coil and then my little coil sits in that stand and then all we need is a bit of your ceramic magnet it goes underneath and there we got our little electric motor isn't that neat right i've shown you how to make a simple electric motor um, if I'm teaching, I want to try and make stuff as relevant as possible to the kids, so I encourage them to go and have a look at old electric motors. Here's one I've taken out of a food mixer. Take it apart, let them see the different parts. There's the commutator, there's the coil, there's the magnetic field made by electromagnets and so on. It now all makes sense to them. Another lovely teaching aid that you could use for exactly this is the loudspeaker. Remember I showed you how you can take it apart. You put a thing there, you take it off, and what do you see? And there's a, a coil. And this coil fits inside a magnetic field. There's a very powerful magnetic field in that little gap. How does the loudspeaker work? Well, we're putting a coil inside a very powerful magnetic field. Along comes your electricity pulsating from your um, system and that electricity is flowing through that coil creating a magnetic field. It's a pulsating magnetic field and it interacts with the magnetic field of the ceramic magnet and starts moving up and down, left-hand motor rule, and that create, causes this speaker um, cone to move up and down in the same frequency, and that's how sound's produced. Right, I've shared quite a few ideas with you this morning, and I encourage you, if you've got ideas, send them in to me on my email address, and I'll find ways of trying to build them in. I'll give you full acknowledgement um, and recognition.